Hi there, Spark fans. Rob Reynolds here with the walkthrough for Project 5 of the SparkFun Inventors Kit version 4.1 series. Now, I know there's a fair chance that some of you got your SIK and grabbed the guidebook and started skimming the table of contents. Blah, 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 sound, blah, 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 display, blah, blah, robot, that's for me. But I would strongly suggest that you go through the first four videos in the series first, just to make sure that your Arduino IDE and the drivers are installed properly and that you're familiar with the concepts and the coding that we've done up to this point. Once you've got that finished, then we can talk about robots. When we think of robots, I'm sure we all have one image that comes to mind. Maybe it's the robot we saw in a movie as a kid, or maybe it's DARPA's Big Dog or some humanoid robot. But robots come in tons of flavors. There are industrial robots, service robots, medical robots. There are educational or telepresence robots, disaster response robots. Even autonomous vehicles classify as robots. So let's talk about the robot that we're going to make with our Sparkman Inventors kit. Basically, we're going to be making a robot that travels. So we'll need to learn how to drive a motor. We'll want to learn how to send commands to a robot and eventually learn how to add a sensor so that the robot can control itself. So let's get started. Since we'll be making a robot that travels, our first circuit will teach us how to spin a motor. So we'll need a few things for this. We'll need one of our motors. We'll just use one for now, just to learn how to get it moving. Now, a motor requires a lot more current than we can output with the red board's digital pins, so we're also going to need a motor driver board. This is going to give the motor the amount of current that it needs, as well as sending the data to it to spin it. We'll also need a switch and 16 jumper wires. Grab all of those and we'll put our circuit together following the hookup guide in the guidebook. So once we've got our circuit all hooked up, we can open up our code and take a look and see what we can expect from that. The file can be found in the usual place. Examples, SIK Guide Codemaster, SIK Circuit 5A, Motor Basics. So let's take a look and see what we have. Initially, our constant integer, AIN1, AIN2, and PWMA, will be defining our pins, pins 13, 12, and 11, respectively. We've got our switch pin set to number 7, and we've got that hooked up there. Our motor speed integer will start at zero so that our motor doesn't automatically start spinning the second we power it up. We've got our pin modes all set to output there with our switch pin set to input. And our serial begins. We'll be using our serial monitor to enter speeds. As you can see here, serial monitor, print line, enter motor speed, zero to 255. It will wait for us to enter something, a value between zero and 255, and then start spinning. Let's see, if zero is available and greater than zero, then it will spin. It, and then it will print our motor speed. And now here we've got our switch. If our switch is low, meaning if the switch is on, it will spin the motor. Otherwise, spin motor will be zero, which is not spinning at all. And down here we've got our void spin motor function. And this just tells the motor how it's going to spin. Which one's going to be high, which one's going to be low, and what the speed is going to be. So let's plug in our red board upload our code and see what we get. Once we've got our code uploaded to our breadboard, we can open up our serial monitor and we should see enter motor speed 0 through 255. So let's enter 255. Now if you don't see something happen, it may be because your switch is in the wrong position. You'll note that it says motor speed 0 now. It will only spin for one second. So switch your switch to the opposite position and enter again, 255. And there we go. You know what, just to make it easier for everybody to see, I'm gonna put a little piece of tape on here. And we'll do it once more. 255. And there we have it, it's just that simple. We can slow it down to 125 and send that. What about 50? back up to 255. So there you can see how easy it is to control the speed of a motor using the breadboard and a motor driver. Let's move on and see what we have next.
So this next circuit, we won't be doing much changing to the circuit itself, but we will want to construct our bot. Uh, as always, when adding to a circuit, we do want to power down. So make sure you're powered down. So what we'll need is our second motor, a pair of wheels, our binder clip, and our dual lock, and of course, a pair of scissors. We're going to cut the dual lock and apply it to both of our motors and then two pieces to the underside of our base plate itself, giving us the base for our robot. And one thing you want to be careful of when you're doing this, once you cut your dual lock, on one motor, you'll want to put it on the side that has the sticker on it. And on the other motor, you want to put it on the opposite side, the side without the sticker. That way, your motors will mount properly to drive your robot forward. Let's put it together. Now that we've got our circuit assembled and our robot itself assembled, let's take a look at the code and see what we can expect from that. As always, you can find it in Examples, SIK Guide Codemaster, and this time we're looking at SIK Circuit 5B, Remote Control Robot. So much of this is going to be similar to our last circuit where we just drove a motor. We're hooking up A in, A in 1 and 2, but we've also got B in 1 and 2. We still got our switch, but we're adding a constant integer of drive time 20 and a turn time of 8. Our string bot direction and our second string is going to be distance. So again, our setup, we state that all of these are outputs with the exception of our switch, which is the input, and we begin our serial. Now we prompt the user, enter a direction followed by a distance, F for forward, B for backward, R for right turn, and I'm assuming L for left turn, and then followed by a distance. So we would get, say, F50. Great, we get down to our loop. If digital read 7 equals low, and if you recall from our last circuit, that means if our switch is in the on position and serial available is greater than zero, that means our bot is going to do something. It will print out what it's going to do, and then it will go. If bot direction equals F, it tells us to spin both the right motor and left motor, 200, delay drive time times distance uh, to integer, and then right motor and left motor will stop. Bot direction B, that's backwards, but now we're spinning at negative 200 for both motors. And if we go down to R, we get one spinning forward and one spinning backward, and the same with L, one forward and one backward. And if none of that is true, then we get both motors at zero, meaning our bot isn't going anywhere. So let's upload this code and see what we can do with it. Now, since I don't know what measurements are when it says F50, I'm going to move some things out of the way here. And I'm going to keep an eye on my bot just to make sure it doesn't drive off the table. So let's open up our serial monitor. And there's our prompt, enter a direction followed by a distance. So for starters, let's try F, and we'll put a space, and add 50, and see what happens. Look at that. What happens if we do back 50? Oh, beautiful. How about a right turn? Nice, left turn. So now you can control your robot. But if you want to do a couple of things in a row though, let's try right 50, back 50, and see if that works. Look at that, multiple commands. So now you can put together a string of commands, send them all at once, and your robot will do it all. So now we know how to send commands to our robot. But what if we want it to have a mind of its own? Let's move on and look at the next circuit.
Now that we've learned to control our robot on its own, in this final circuit, we're going to teach it to control itself by giving it a brain. Well, it already has a brain. It's got the breadboard, but we're going to give it eyes. Actually, we're going to give it ears because we'll be using the ultrasonic distance sensor. So we'll just need that and four additional jumper wires, and we can hook up our final circuit. Again, don't forget to power down your board before you add the next components to your circuit. Now that your circuit's put together, let's open up the code and see what it has to tell us. As always, under examples, SIK guide code master, you'll find SIK circuit 5C, autonomous robot. So most of this should look fairly familiar because this is based on everything we've done up till this point. So here we set our A in one and two and our PWM for A to pins 13, 12 and 11 respectively, but we've added our second motor for PWMB, B in, 1 and 2. We've also added a trigger pin and an echo pin. If you recall, back in project number 2, we used that when we set up our distance sensor in that experiment. We've got our switch pin at 7. Of course, our distance begins at 0. We've got backup time and turn time. Once we get into our setup, again, we define all our pin functions, outputs or inputs, and we set our serial monitor to begin. Now in the loop, the first thing we're going to do is get the distance. As you can see here, get distance is going to be a function because it's got these parentheses here. So we'll find that at the bottom of the code. Going through the loop, it prints out the distance. Of course, we won't be doing this because we won't be tethered to the computer. This will be running on its own. We can, of course, run it off of the USB cable with the computer to start, but eventually we'll want to add the battery pack and run it completely autonomously. So. If distance switch, if the digital read of switch pin is low, so if our switch is in the on position, then it's going to start reading. If the distance is less than 10, it's going to back up and turn. So it'll print space, it'll print back. The right motor zero, left motor zero, delay. That means it'll pause for 200 milliseconds. And then, as you can see here, it's going to start backing up. And then it's going to turn. Once it does that, it will take another reading and move forward. Now this, of course, is the end of the loop. If your switch is in the off position, both motors will be at zero, so it doesn't overwhelm the redboard. And down here, you can see we've got our right motor speed, which we've used before, mimicking that for left motor speed. And finally, get distance. And once again, this goes back to our ultrasonic distance sensor. It reads echo time and calculated distance. So we've got our trigger pin and our echo pin. It sends out a sound, it receives that sound, and uses a little fancy math, figures out how far away the object is from an obstacle. So let's plug in and upload this and start having fun. Now I probably should have mentioned this beforehand, but once you upload your code, your robot may immediately take off. That's because your switch is in the on position. So you probably should have switched it to the off position. I should have done the same thing. Sorry about that. But now that we're all set up, let's see what we've got. Make sure your switch is in the off position so you're not moving. Now, since we're still tethered with our USB cable, we can open our serial monitor and we can see exactly what it's seeing. Yes, to infinity and beyond. And there, we've got distance readings flying by. Now, if I bring my hand closer, we can see they drop down. The further away I get, the larger the readings. So if you recall in the code, if it gets within 10, then your robot's going to turn around. So let's be a little daring. Let's try something out here. Let's back it up and let's switch it on. <laughs> okay, so you can see when it sees an obstacle, it stops and backs up in an attempt to avoid it. It's probably being dragged by this cord, so I think what we should do next is remove the cord, add our battery pack back on underneath. Remember, you should still have the dual lock under there, and take it out into the wild.
Congratulations, you have completed all of the projects in the SparkFun Inventors Kit version 4.1. But if you think that's all there is, you have been sorely misled, my friends. This kit is just a starting point, just a springboard for a whole world of experiments. Uh, we haven't even touched the quick connector on the redboard yet. And with the ever-growing library of SparkFun quick boards, there's a world of projects and experiments out there for you to do. Your imagination is your only limit in this. Now, in our next video, Oh yes, just because we're out of projects does not mean we are out of videos. In our next video, we'll be looking beyond the basics of the SIK into a whole world of new possibilities and experiments. Until then, stay curious and happy hacking, friends.